Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of our new horror tutorial. Um, I'm going to explain a few basics of Unreal and also um, of our horror tutorial as well in this episode uh, and just go through basically everything you'll need to know going forward uh, and what to expect really. Um, so for this tutorial I'm using 4.25.3 um, as you can see I've already done a little bit of a trial yesterday um, so we're gonna so for everyone following along obviously download the Epic Games launcher and download Unreal 4.25 or whichever Unreal you're using um, and click launch you can see it in the library tab by the way just there so it might take a few minutes to load up but uh, we'll follow along from here so uh, it should launch I would have thought is it launched here we go you'll then be met with this screen which is your project browser um, <clears throat> if you opened up the project it would have automatically gone straight into the project but because we've clicked on um, the actual launcher itself you'll be met with these options uh, I've never messed with any of these three but we're gonna go into games and click next now, Unreal is really good in the sense that it gives you loads of templates to mess around with. Uh, and it gives you kind of like a little miniature head start into your project. Um, now, we're going to make a first person horror game. But for this, I'm not going to pick um, uh, first person. We're actually going to click third person for our first person horror. Uh, the reason for this is... Um, I don't know about you, but when you're playing first person, it's very, it can sound very strange, but it's very disalarming when you ha when you can't see your feet or your hands or your body. When you look down, uh, you're just met with like the invisible kind of nothingness there. Uh, those are for, so if you look at this one, sorry, you've got the, you've got the gun here. What it'll do is you've got two arms and a gun and that's it. There's nothing else. We don't actually need the gun either. Um, so for this, you're just giving yourself a body and a rotating camera, but we're going to change it when we get into the project. So click next. Now I always use blueprints. It's, um, a very easier form. I'm not, uh, in the know about C++. It's something I probably will learn one day, but uh, for now just using blueprints. Uh, I always click it, I always keep it on maximum quality. You can always change it when you get in there and I always enable ray tracing as well. Again, it's something you can you can change in your project settings. Um, so we've got desktop console, and we've got with starter content. The starter content just comes with a load of extra um, helpful things for you to use in your project. We'll have a look through them in a minute, uh, just so we can get um, acquainted with what we've got um, handy to us. So horror tutorial two. So let's create that project. This might take a couple of minutes. So once it's finally loaded, yeah, once it's finally loaded, you'll be met with this screen. Um, it looks pretty basic for now, um, but let's just click play as an example. Now we can move the camera around our character and we can run around and we can jump. It's basically all we can do at the moment, but that's fine, we will build upon this. Um, for now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm also just going to delete these four walls. You don't need them. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to build our own um, environment to run around, so we won't need that. Um, let's have a little look at the content we've got. So if you click on content down here, you should see that we've now got five folders to sort of have a look in. So first of all, if we go to geometry and then meshes, we've got a few things here. Uh, and these are basically just cubes, circles, things like that you can drag into your scene. Uh, you've also got the mannequin, which is our character here, but we are going to change him as well in the next, in the first few episodes as well. So don't worry about that. But it comes with a lot of animations, uh, mostly just the ones that you've already seen, which is the walking, the jumping, um, the very basic ones. Uh, and you can also go into here and find the materials for your character, which we shouldn't need to touch the mesh as well which is your physics asset your mannequin and your skeleton 
again we wouldn't we shouldn't need to touch those um, for now it also comes with the starter content obviously because we kicked on that it comes with a bunch of different things that you can use so if you wanted to try and start building some more houses you can literally just start dragging those in um, and they are already good to go um, but again we don't need those we're gonna build our own in blender um, it comes with some extra blueprints which are things like your particle systems lights things like that again we're not going to use those we're going to make our own uh, I don't know what oh that's just um, we can ignore that uh, maps always comes in with these things um, I always delete them out it basically if you click on that and open it up it'll just load you into an area where you can see everything um, sort of running at once uh, we've got particle systems that came that come in extra so if we again if we drag those in we get lovely little streams of steam um, or we could have smoke if we needed smoke um, but again for now we don't need any of those um, but again they're handy to have we've got materials we can use as well these will come in handy so again if I make a building uh, and I texture it I can then add these straight onto the building and it will give it a lovely little texture to each building so those are always very very helpful um, the more materials you accumulate over time uh, the quicker you'll find doing things is um, I have a very large library of mega scans uh, if you don't know what those are look those up in the marketplace they're just very high quality uh, textures you can put onto your objects when you bring them into Unreal we've got props as well so we've got things like chairs we could bring in if we wanted to uh, doors um, the one we might use is the ceiling lamp if I bring that up uh, we might use that early on but again I'd rather show you creating all these things individually instead of just dragging them straight out of uh, the Unreal starter content. We've got shapes, so again we can pull these in if you wanted to use them for whatever, uh, just to add to your scene, you can, it's simply just dragging them in and dropping them. And then these textures are the textures that have been added to your materials. That's something we will touch upon eventually I'm sure, um, but materials and textures, they although they kind of seem the same, they're not. Um, but again we'll get into that down the line I'm sure so that's the start of content uh, that was stuff we will be using at some point or another but for now we can leave it alone um, we've got a third person mesh which is um, just things that you just saw in the scene which was the stairs and things um, again we won't be using any of that <clears throat> and then the third person blueprint which we will be spending a lot of time in um, at some point or another uh, I'm sure um, let's just open them up so you've got your third person uh, game mode and you've also got your third person character we will be spending a lot of time in there I won't go into it just yet um, but we will um, definitely be spending a lot of time in there so what we've been left with now is just a square we again we will probably delete this as well at some point um, because what we're going to do is we're going to set up a series of levels and each level will be a room or an area in which we can enter and it'll be a very much kind of Resident Evil style where you go up to the door you press E you'll enter and then there'll be a transition from that level to the next level which will be the next room and you'll be able to plan each one out and have it how you want it set up so you don't have to follow along exactly, but most of the stuff I will be doing, you'll be able to sort of tweak and change as you learn things down the line. So if I make, for example, a warehouse, you might not want to make a warehouse. You might want to make, um, I don't know, uh, a bedroom. And then the door will do exactly what I do, but you'll just have yours go maybe into a hallway, whereas mine might actually go into the outside, for example. So um, you don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing. You can always pause what I'm saying and do what your own thing until you're ready to carry on with the tutorial. So it is a little bit free. Um, okay, so the first thing I wanna do, so we're gonna do horror. We're gonna set it at night. So there's two things we need to do um, before we can um, get it to night. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go into our world outliner. The world outliner is uh, essentially a list of everything that is in our world at the moment. Um, as you can see, we've got a third person character. We've got, um, what else will you notice? We've got things like the skylight, which is the light. Uh, you've got your process volume, which is this thing. We'll go into that later. Um, 
and we've got things like the floor yeah what we want is the light source and then we want to click back onto our details we also want to click on to this rotate so it says see it says select and rotate objects we want to click onto that and we also want to grab this green one now if you can't i'm going to bring it a bit closer so you can actually see there is an arrow that is facing downwards that means our sun is there what we want to do is if i re-click onto it is make sure that arrow is facing up so bring it around to uh 160 should be fine you'll see the sun is still there and we've still got daytime but it's gotten a bit darker which is great uh so what you want to do now is come back to your world outliner you want to come down to the sky sphere blueprint click on that as you can see it's selected something completely different um and what you want to do is go back into the details and we want to refresh material there we go and now we've got night time it's as simple as that we're not going to create a day night cycle in this but if you wanted to you would essentially tell your light source to rotate um <clears throat> and then get your sky sphere to update every so often and it would like can go around um but that's another thing so the one thing i do want to do is i want to just um bring the star brightness up a little bit I normally go for about a 0 0.7 uh, so you can see them uh, it makes it look a bit more like a, a proper night sky um, and what I also like to do is bring the clouds up a little bit more uh, I normally go for like a 1.2 I think it's, it's pretty good you can change the speed if you want to I mean again these settings are all completely down to you uh, it depends on how fast you want this, the clouds moving how thick you want them um, all that depends on you guys uh, you can also bring your sun brightness down a bit as well um, if you don't want it to be too bright um, and yeah so that puts us there which is great so now that we've got our night that pretty much sets the scene for the whole game when you'll be looking outside of windows or if you will be outside at any point um, that will set our scene now the next thing I want to do is um, I want to move the camera so oh maybe I should have with her so first things first actually sorry so let's just so although it looks bright now click play and it is even darker than it was before okay which is which is what we want we want it to be almost pitch black when you're inside of the building uh, so that sh and we should get that effect from there so now the next thing we want to do is so if you open up your third person character which you can find in the third person BP in your contents browser go to third person character you'll be you'll notice a bunch of code don't worry about any of that at the moment just go over to where it says viewport and click that right and now you can see our character we can move around him we can have a little look see what he's doing now <clears throat> the next thing we want to do is bring this camera forward into our player bring him up as well okay now there is one thing that's going to be wrong with this so if you click compile go back to your third person example map now we can see the camera's been updated because we obviously hit compile but let's play now it looks fine you can see his feet but when i move around it doesn't quite move with the player right um there you go see that you can if you look around you can see the head and stuff it doesn't it doesn't quite work sadly so what we want to do to fix that is click on your follow camera and then move the camera from your camera boom and place it onto your mesh now that will semi solve it but we also want to do this if you search click search on the parent socket you'll, you'll get given a list of all these bones now, these are all the bones of the actual mesh itself what we want to do is find the head there we go so click head now, as you can see it's moved a little bit annoying but that's okay what we actually want to do is move it back over to here and then click on the rotate and rotate oh, rotate it 90 degrees and you should know it's the right way because this little bit here this bit's poking out will be facing upwards 
And what this will do now is this will move with the character. So let's just put this down just a slight bit. And the reason I've done that is because I want to be able to see the hands. So as you can see, you get that wobble. Yeah, but you can't look up and down. You, uh, you can't see me, but I'm moving up and down. Okay. So what we need to do is come out of that. <clears throat> we click on the um, click back on the follow camera. Come down to camera options and use pawn control rotation. Compile. And we also want to click on the mesh. Um, no, no, you don't. Sorry, I tell a lie. We want to click on the third person character in brackets self, which is there. And we want to use controller rotation your compile. And now we should be back to where we were before. We can look down, we can see our hands going. Um, and the controller now moves perfectly with our model okay our mesh is in right we can see that look around and when we jump his hand should come up in front of the camera there we go brilliant so that's all working perfectly so if we exit that now don't forget to save as much as possible the reason being is that when if you don't save what will happen is is if you experience a crash which has happened to me in the past you lose everything and is uh, just a massive nightmare. Um, so that's all we're going to be focusing on today uh, in this episode. Um, so thank you so much if you have watched. Obviously, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Uh, head on over to our Facebook page as well. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description, uh, which is where we're doing all of our games that's coming out in 2021. So um, hopefully you'll, you'll take a look at that as well for us and let us know your thoughts and feelings. Um, and until then, we'll see you in the next episode where we'll be looking at uh, setting the scene and we'll probably be looking at Blender. Thank you guys. Take care. Bye.